What is up guys, it is Bucky and welcome to your 11th Intermediate Java Tutorial and this is pretty much a continuation from the last Intermediate Java Tutorial which was 10 in case you guys uh, can't count and in this tutorial we're going to be finishing up a couple methods from the collections class so you know enough with me talking let's just uh, get right into it so we ended up and we called a method copy which pretty much took everything from L and copied it into list copy so from here what we're going to do is just print out a little display so we actually know what's going on so system out print line and let's just print out something clever copy of list with a colon and from here we need to call that uh, output method that we didn't create yet so output and instead of outputting the original list let's go ahead and output list and I accidentally left a comment that's embarrassing so let's get rid of that output we'll just put like a list copy so what this is going to do eventually once we build the output method is output the new copied list that we just made so the last thing the last method I want to teach you from the collections class is how you can take pretty much any list or collections actually and fill it with something that wasn't in there before so let's go ahead and we could finally add our comment and put fill collection with crap and let's go ahead and put collection dot fill and it takes two parameters this method the first parameter is what collection do you want to fill well let's just go ahead and change the list you can change the list copy if you want it doesn't really matter and the second one is the type of data what are you going to be filling it with well we want to take that list and um, this is pretty much the same as replace any time you come across any instance or element in the list we want to change it to X so now instead of our list which was NWP since we reversed it it's going to be XXX so uh, you know we could have picked a better letter but you know too bad deal with it so go ahead and we'll print this out one last time system out print line and just go ahead and put like after filling the list colon and that line and now let's go ahead and output the list which was called L one last time and now the only thing let's see collections that's why I'm getting an error and the only errors we should have is that output because we didn't create another method called output yet so let's go ahead and change that right now so let's go ahead and tighten this up and outside of your main method right here make sure that you don't put this method inside the main or it won't work so you need to go outside the main but yet inside the class whatever your main class is mine called mine's called Bucky we want to write a new output method so let's leave a comment right there I'll name an E method and let's go ahead and put private since it's private to the class static void and we'll put output and put list and this is the parameter we pass it in as you can see we passed it in a collection method which was a list all the time so let's go ahead and put list character and we'll just name it like the list for simplicity make sure you spell that right the list and now what we can do is we pretty much just need to output everything so I'm gonna go ahead and put an enhanced for loop in here so for character um, thing and I'll put the list and make sure that's the same uh, parameter you passed in and what this is going to do is it's going to loop through whatever list you pass into it and it's going to treat each element as thing so now we can you know alter that or pretty much do whatever we want so let's go ahead and put system out printf since by the way the main thing we're trying to accomplish in this method is just to print stuff out so that's why we need printf and for the format let's go ahead and put a string variable and of course for our argument it has to be thing and in case you can't remember what it's going to do is it's going to loop through each element in the list and it's going to output it for you simple enough so then after outputs you probably want to just print out a blank line just cause if you don't everything's going to be running out on the same line it's going to look pretty confusing so system out print line and that's all there is to it so go ahead and check your program and make sure you don't have any errors and then go ahead and run it 
press OK, and now here's our final output. Whoa, easy house. Uh, good thing for Windows 7. Whenever I put it to the top, it uh, there we go. So now you see our original list is PWN Pwn, not bad. After we called the reverse method on it, it's NWP, which is a reverse of PWN. In case you guys couldn't figure that out. Now here we printed out copy list. So this is an entirely different list than here. It's pretty much just a copy of it. And the last method that we called is fill. So let me see if I can find it right here. Collections.fill. And what it did is take the original list L and replaced every element in it with X. So now instead of NWP, we have XXX. So that's demonstrating a couple new methods from the collections class and how you can use them and why they are useful. So that's that for this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.